Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the semifinals. One of our premier matchups right here in our battle for Olympus is Snipe Gaming versus Team Dignitas. We're going to see Team Dignitas with their new lineup for the first time in competitive play. Dare to Care on the support role, Gnaw playing that mid role, and Shing playing solo lane, where Snipe Gaming will come up with most of the same. But once again, the best is going to be playing that middle lane. And this is going to be interesting. I mean, either after this match, someone is someone is going home smiling and someone is not, right? In that middle lane. I don't know. I was going to be like, yeah, this is why I'm on Dignitas now. Or Best is going to be like, told you guys. But immediate Nemesis grab. So the, the raw first pick for Snipe is something that they prioritize a lot on Takiki. They like what it brings to the team. The heal, the sustain, the, the burst damage is very, very strong. Geb and Nemesis. Nemesis is very good at punishing Geb. And picking Nemesis and not allowing your opponents to have it gives you a lot of options. Geb for Dare to Care. God, he was very good at uh, back when he was on Cognitive. Still very strong. And we'll see what exactly goes with that shield. Zatman hovering on Chuck. Yeah, the choice of Nemesis Cret also makes certain picks less important on the other side of the map. So you take a look at picks like Jean Quay and Chuck, although it was picked up by Dignitas, you're kind of discouraged from picking these thicker characters because against a Nemesis pick, they're just not as thick as they need to be. And as that's what they bring to the table, correct balance means that they don't necessarily have many other boons. They're just harder to kill. So with Nemesis taking that off, they just become a mid-range character. And you have to look towards other characters with other intentions. Coming out from Dignitas, the Circuit ban. Yeah, don't want to let we can have that Circuit. His jungler is still available. Thor, last game, did okay. And I think a lot of that had to do with the way that uh, Best played Scylla and... And the way that Snipe Gaming used the setup from Weekend. That said, the mechanics weren't where I would have wanted to see them, right? Like, he wasn't finding the ultimates. He wasn't comboing people down. Which is definitely something that Thor is very capable of doing. Snipe is going to counterban. Ao Kuang, taking that off the board. Not going to give it to Na. His Vulcan is available. We'll see what happens if he likes to go for that. Shing currently has the pick for Dignitas. It's going to be a Freya. For the... I have no idea. Shock mid, maybe? We might see. Solo, Freya, Freya, ADC? Freya's a little like Mercury in the respect that she's a little ambiguous. We see Freya in the in the uh, Hunter role a decent amount. Zatman can play it. Not quite as ambiguous as Merc as her laning phase by herself is a little precarious, if you will. Yeah. But can definitely play in more than one role. Nemesis, probably just a good jungler. Can't really lane too hot. We'll see what this last pick is going to be, and that will really solidify the roles. It's going to look like a Hades mouse over. We know Anatolia has played Hades in the past, and we don't really know what Gnaw can bring to the table. I mean, he, he experimented for a while with um, Evil Empire, a short experience yeah. with Wolfie for about less than a month. They're going to lock in that Isis, so you should expect to see Isis in the middle lane. I'm going to see Shing play that Chalk for solo. All right, so Isis is an incredibly powerful character when you use that ultimate to its full effect. It reduces damage by 15%, which comes out. It's flat, and it's after DR. So uh, you've got a you've got a raw snipe that's going to hit you for 600. Well, your magic protection comes through, reduces it to 400. Take 15% off of that, which is going to be 60 damage, and then it's going to be doing 340 damage from 600. The ult charge up, charges up, explodes for lots of damage and lots of healing, and if not can put that in the right place and use it proactively, it can be incredibly effective. If he's just using it for burst damage and sort of the snap ult that we see more common, especially in casual play where it's just sort of like, here's some damage to a bunch of people, it will still be beneficial it's still worth using in that capacity but it's not nearly as game changing so it's going to be interesting to see just how na plays isis zatman is going to be on that freya adc which is interesting because it's really more a trademark of allied and snipe so can't wait to see how he does in that dueling either way we're going to head into our match snipe gaming versus dignitas 
Really excited to see how this plays out, especially that the best versus Naw matchup. Welcome back to the Battle for Olympus. My name is FDOT, joined here by my co-caster, Kret. And we're into the semifinals. Snipe Gaming versus Team Dignitas is one of our premier matchups. Always has been, most likely always will be. But this time, the teams are drastically different. Snipe Gaming, Weekend making up that jungle role while Incon and Allied play in the longhand lane. Kiki Star will be in the solo lane. And a recent swap over from the opponent, the best, will be playing mid lane. On the other side, it's Team Dignitas. We'll start with the long-standing members of the team. You've got Zapman on your Freya ADC and Lassus on Nemesis Jungle. That's where the similarities end. Is it's going to be Shing in the solo lane on Chalk in the middle lane, Na on Isis, and in the Guardian role, support role, it's going to be Dare to Care on Geb. A very different lineup. I also, I also like how. Dig was like, yeah, we're going to take Shing from you. And then Snipe was like, all right, we'll take best. Like, we could trade. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a matchup that means a little bit more than just the brackets, folks. You know, uh, Snipe Gaming, they, they, of course, the teams themselves have stuff to prove. But individually, these players have a lot to prove. Weekend is filling the role of, of Shing, who used to be the namesake of this team. While the best has been on Team Dignitas for almost two years now, he's gonna be playing against them for the first time ever. This is gonna be a, this is gonna mean a lot to certain members on these two teams and we should see some high octane play because of it. It's gonna be exciting. That said, interesting choice to do the three man camp clear at the mids, which means that Dignitas is gonna be slightly late to their blue, but no contention coming out from Snipe. In the middle lane, Na is going to take an aggressive stance, work on that clear, which is going to be stronger than the best. Isis is just a character made to have good clear. If you don't interrupt her, Wingus is absolutely destructive to the wave, and even if you do, she's got AoE auto attacks on her hit progression, which is, I think she's now the only ranged character with a hit progression since they removed that from Zeus. Yeah. I, you're, you're actually correct, and right away, as we, we see a little uh, early disbursement from Weekin. Laz is also heading towards the middle lane, so junglers leave the solo rather quickly, and Weekin will change his mind and come from the front instead, already punishing this dual lane cret. Um, off air, we kind of did a little bit of analysis, and Freya is Freya is a hunter for the same fact that she's a jungler. There's really no place to put Freya, but if she lasts to the late game, you're in a good spot. That said, she's got no lane clear, and pairing her with a Guardian with also no lane clear, this is going to be have to be a passive lane for a long time. Yeah, it's going to be passive for a while, but once you get rolling on Freya, there's a lot of intricacy with your Banish. That said, when you miss your Banish, you're going to have a really tough time. We'll see how this ends up working out uh, as the game progresses. But in the long lane, Shing versus Kiki. Definitely an interesting matchup as well. Shing's having some trouble clearing right now, and he's actually starting Heartseeker too. So he's going to give up a little bit in his early game, but once he gets, well, 780 gold, so after this wave, he's going to be able to back, start stacking, and suddenly we'll have incredible kill potential and incredible clear. All right now, this will be the third flavor, and we've seen all flavors of Chalk so far. We started yeah. off the day with a fully defensive Stone of Gaia chalk that can't be killed, and then we saw a pen boot sort of warrior chalk, and now this is Shing's sort of prototypical style. Heart Seeker Rush, let's get the stacks, let's do damage, I'm still chalk, and that can rain hell with good rotation. So we'll see how Shing has grown into the solo lane and, and if he can get Ooh, the most out geeky. of his rotations the way Lash is right now. That's going to be the thunderstorm coming down. Kiki's in a lot of trouble, down to just 10 health. And Lassus finds it with the dash, but body blocked by the creeps. It's a one for one trade, but still for first blood, could be worthwhile. Shing needs to be careful. Special delivery could be big here. Weekend does have Sonic Boom. Shing able to juke it. Nice jump there. Best is going to come in with a stun. That's the ice assault that we needed to see. Great damage reduction, great healing. Beautiful play from Na. Immediate, almost as if he heard the pregame reports. Cret Gnaw immediately used that Isis as uh, as defensive, and that's the utility that comes out of this mage. You yeah. look at mages like you look at mages like Scylla and and Agni. I guess sort of is half and half, but Isis brings a lot of utility to this team. 
And and the damage reduction is going to be big. And immediately, first play of the game from her, we see it used correctly. We've got high hopes for this red team middle lane. And this is going to set up Shing to be aggressive and controlled. A kill on Nikiki, Heartseeker done on that uh, on that shock is going to be big. In the duo lane, Rom's up in the air. And Khan's going to ult over. Zatman still does have his Valkyrie's discretion. Will Allied be able to survive? Will Zatman be able to get the kill? Two pulses come out. There's the Irradiate, the Jukes. He wants one more hit. Not going to find it, but around the backside is Lasses. One, two, three, four. Slice and dice. Zap gets the kill. Beautiful synchronization. That kill came a little later than Dig's house wanted. I don't think Zap, I don't think uh, Lazarus really wanted to come from the backside. They did secure the kill, but, you know, the micromanagement from Incontinentia, we talked about how good of a support he was earlier, and right there, it's just proven it. You know, you can't stop the double team coming from Dignitas with that pincer move, but Incon just rushing, not using any abilities, just to get in front of Zapman so that he can be in between his hunter and the enemy hunter really doing it right. So good good micromanagement from Incon. Unfortunately, his hunter does fall to the wayside. Allied still not finished with those Devo gloves. That man has yet to go back to base. You know, now that I think about it, the first tournament game we've seen Shing play in and the first gank, Lasses dies to get him a kill. That is the most Shing thing I've heard since he was the first person <laughs> to feed a Chinese team. I love Shing. He's such a... He's, I love Shang. Anyway, in the in the middle lane, Nas doing quite good. He, he did is pushed a little bit back now that Bess has that red buff and has a little bit more lane control. This Isis Agni matchup is definitely pretty old school. We don't see Isis a lot in the current meta, not because she's bad, but because she's very difficult. You get pressured very easily, she has trouble repositioning, and you have to land those ultimates perfectly if you want to really make yourself worthwhile. But when you do, you can definitely feel the power that it brings. Both mid laners playing their diamond characters, so you know they've put the hours in on these on these characters. And as we, we showed, Gnaw using his ultimate early, really a lot of experience coming out there. Satman alone in the lane with allied in con, finding him. But good vision lets that man know that he's coming. He's going to slink back to prevent anything real from happening. Yeah, and that rotation from Incon is going to be a cover onto Snipe Gaming's speed buff just to make sure that it's not really going to get invaded. Great play there. In the middle lane, Best is up against two players. Not too much happening there. Incon holding his own in the long lane. And uh, in the solo, Shang's just jumping around, having a good time. Starting to get those stacks up. Let's take a quick look at how much physical power he gets. And he needs 20 stacks, 19 stacks, to finish stacking that heart seeker. Stun ball's gonna go nowhere, and Gnaw's gonna go ahead and clear the wave. No stun out by the best, but Gnaw does take a little bit of poke from the subsequent bomb, so that's gonna be some player damage onto the best score line. All in all, we're looking at a passive game so far. Teams are really reluctant to go for anything super big. We just see a couple of picks, three kills on the board, less than seven minutes into the game. Uh, it is very, very even right now in the middle lane. It's a uh, dual lane phase, but a little bit different as it's mid laner and support here. Just getting the clear, staying safe. Ani trying to get the poke. Dive on the right hand side. Note, last is just going to show up. Allow Shing to get that clear off nice and easy. And uh, Shing's back will be interrupted by Kiki. So, going to be sticking around a little while longer. Sonic Boom in the long lane. Zapman's in trouble. He's trying to get to his team. It's a blink over the wall from Dare to Care to make the rotation a little bit faster. Not on his way. And it's going to be a re or a disengage from Snipe. They don't want to take this fight just yet. Weekend is lurking. Could go for the kill. And it's going to be a combo. Can Zap survive this? He will not. Great Goomba Stomp coming out from Incon. Great patience. And now Dare to Care will also be a casualty of war. Really good setup by Snipe right there. Weaken faked like he was leaving. Knew that they had the Athena ultimate and the ROM ultimate. Their special delivery secures basically both of those. And that's a lot of damage for any one person to really deal with. Let alone, alone Freya under far or, or not quite farmed to her power spike just yet. Not really able to push onto the tower as Snipe as Nods rotated over to defend. But in part, all all lanes are being pushed by Snipe Gaming at the moment. Really impressive 
play coming out, and Laz is just barely getting away with a sliver of health. Yeah, Laz is a... <laughs> he was barely able to survive there, having a bit of a tough time. Best in mid lane, sending in about half, just getting this clear. Probably wants to back soon. Oh, he's going to pop a health slot, so he's, he's staying a little while longer. We can roaming around, doing very well this game. 0-2, making stuff happen for his team, and currently Snipe, sending 3-2. Three to two, up 700, 800 gold, but more importantly, 2,000 experience. Looking at the board, Lassus is even, Dare to Care behind two levels, Allied, even, Kiki, up one, and the best, even. I mean, that support matchup is going to be interesting, as Incon has generally always been really good at farming, really good at timers. Back before timers were on the map, Incon was a textbook always rotating and using abilities as soon as these minions spawned, whereas Danakara's claim to fame was really in his mechanics. Farming wasn't exactly his forte, so to speak, so that support matchup, depending on how distant Incon can get himself away from Dare to Care, can mean a lot. But right here, Dare to Care gets a three-man stun, all for mid Carpies. Gnaw's gonna come around the back line with the rest of Dignitas in tow. Good damage onto Gnaw, but there's that damage reduction, so not much else is gonna follow, and Snipe Gaming is gonna disperse while Team Dignitas pushes them completely out of position. They go ahead and pick up the left Harpies. Now they're aggressing on the Gold Fury, but that could be trouble. Yeah, Weekend going to be low. Nah comes around. Will not find the hit with the Spirit Ball on the left-hand side of the fight. Incon and Allied getting forced out. Thunderstrike comes through onto Incon. Nensha Zatman finds Weekend on the right. Best is coming back in. Kiki with the snipe will connect onto Nah. Spirit Ball doesn't find its mark. Nah re not really finding those Zatman coming back in, but in true Zatman form, he's in a horrible position. Oh no. Will somehow still get the kill. Also in true Zatman form. Staying alive just a little while longer. Now Shang very low. Nice juke back. Will reset the speed buff. Much to his chagrin. Always wanting those speeds. Still from the solo lane. Loves well, that buff. Why doesn't Dare to Care try to get out? Still not out of dodge just yet. The best tries to get the stun onto Dare to Care, but a good juke. Those little mo there are those mechanics we were talking about, Cret. Just oh, able to predict where best is going to yeah. drop the stun and just barely get oh, out Oh, in the trouble. mid, Kiki's in a horrible position. Nah, finds the silent Spirit Ball, Wing Gust, and Ra has trouble with Isis. You you, there's no interrupts. There's no chance of stopping mm -hmm. that Wing Gust, and when you're slowed... You're an easy target, especially in a corridor, too. I mean, that was just a bad place for Kiki to be. I'm still reeling, though, because of how Zatman played that fight. He was in a horrible position, and then he gets the kill on the allied. It's always allied, too. It's just... We've seen it Middle before. Lane. Best interrupted Best out of his out. dash. That's going to be really bad. Slowed, and the kill goes to Dare to Care. That'll help clean up that little uh, disparity that we talked about between the supports. That's going to be his first kill of the game onto the Geb. So he's sitting at 5,200 gold while Incon sitting at 57. Still trailing by about 500. This Gold Fury might help if they can get it. Five members of Dignitas surrounding the Gold Fury. Incon already got Laz's ultimated in the back line while Ally just trying to poke people down from the front. Gold Fury goes the way of the red team. Down goes Incon and Ally's in the air. Try to get some damage out while he waits for his team. Falls back, Kiki or Nas here, but that's about it. Weekend's looking for a good ultimate. His team has already retreated to no Sonic Boom. Right, Dare to Care is going to reconsider his path and head back to Duel Lane to collect some farm. Great play onto the Gold Fury. That was actually a little bit risky, and the reason so is that Gnaw uh, reflexively used his Ice Assault, right? He saw Bird right. next to him. He was like, oh god, I need to Ice Assault because. That's his defense mechanism. Like, Isis doesn't really have escape. You've got movement on your one, but it's not truly an escape. You drop your ultimate and you tank through the damage. So when Mercury's next to him, he ulted. That's a reflex, but Weaken didn't want to be there anyway. He wanted to back out, so that ultimate wasn't needed. It would have been really good in that fight, but still coming out in favor of Dignitas. Looking very, very good once again. They've reversed the experience difference. 3,000 gold or experience in their favor. 2,000 gold. Dignitas sitting 8 to 4 at the 13 minute mark, making a nice transition into the mid game. Mid Harpies contested by the now even supports. Here comes Laz's though. Good stun coming out from Dare to Care. Incon not able to get out of there in time. No ultimate just yet from Laz's. Incon's going to have to force to leave using the ultimate. So he's going to go right to middle lane, save his life. 
but the Fan Bureau of Olympus on cooldown for a while now. Yeah, that's a Cataclysm for Defender of Olympus trade, which is honestly pretty good in favor of Dignitas. I mean, alt for yes. alt trades are... You're always like, uh, I wish I didn't have to alt to get that one, but it's a global versus a non-global. They both set up team fights, so I want to give that to uh, to Dignitas. But both characters are definitely still strong without their ultimates. Athena for the ability to snap, engage, and four speeds with the uh, dash taunt. And Geb, because, well, Stone Shield is basically an ultimate. <laughs> Pretty much. Hunter Lane, Zapman leading by about half a level right there, 12 on 12 at the moment, but Ally just hit it and Zapman has been there for a while. Well, 13 now, so there you go, that's that half level. And the rest of the teams are kind of just even. Laz is uh, level 14, looking at the enemy jungler, you know, so level 12, so Weekend's trailing a little bit as well, but holistically, folks, Dignitas is in the lead by about 2,600 gold. Good poke on the last. That's a stun! But a good Geb shield is going to prevent him from being anywhere in problem. Or, or Nemesis shield is going to prevent him from being anywhere in trouble. And now four members of Dignitas right here. Not going to even play the secret card. Oh, hold on. Just right lane. Straight up push. Sonic boom comes through. Shing. Going to use his thunderstorm. He'll be all right. Storm call. He'll be okay. In the middle lane. Bastard is going to clear. Nice spirit ball. They do more damage the further away you are. It's really it's really nice to get those poke, but Zapman in trouble. Nice stone shield. That's the power of Gap. Zap doesn't even take health damage there. Best is going to be banished out. A little bit of awkward, but forces the dash back. Now weakens in the area. Rom ult. Great damage on the Zapman, and that's going to mean that Dignitas can't really... They don't want to fight right now. I mean, that's a, that's a big deal, and that's a lot of times... What you don't see coming out from ROM players. Uh, a lot of times you see the ultimate to secure kills, but the realization that you can't be aggressive when you don't have enough health to really fight yeah. is something that, you know, Allied understands. And he gets in the air and he pushes that man out of the fight single handedly from a safe distance. So that was going to be a mid lane siege, just turned into a, a, a retreat. Yeah, and the thing about Freya, especially in this match, is basically you have your health pool plus your ultimate, and that's how long you can do damage, and you have to try and be in the right position to get that damage off. Now, that's going to be increased by Ice's ultimate, making the health pool bigger, and Geb ultimate providing a new health pool of uh, up to 650 extra health for the cost of just one of Geb's cooldowns. So, taking Freya low before the fight starts is incredibly important, just to make things easier for Snipe Gaming. Best is in trouble. That Spirit Ball could connect. It will. Best did not dash there and is taken down. Now Weaken getting turned on. Big damage from the Pulse Radiates. Allied in trouble. Will be dashing back, but dashing in. It's Athena. Great circle protection. Maybe popped a little bit early, but it, it doesn't matter. Allied's in a lot of trouble now. And he's going to go down before he goes up. Zapman finds the Tripski. In the middle lane, Kiki also getting into some trouble himself. Three members in the front, one in the back. Danny Care with a blink. Cataclysm onto a single member. Kiki or nah. Four members are right here in this middle lane pushing. That's going to be the tower for Dignitas. Or first tower of the game down for the count. 16 and a half minutes in. Goldfear has spawned. And they're going to extend their lead even more right now. 4200. Uh, and this is going to be a very quick gold for you as you have three auto attackers. Ice is coming in. Wait, hold on. It's Incon. He's going to be silenced out, banished, stunned. And now he's going to be in a really tough spot. He used his dash. Nice five man talk. Great damage. Padding the stats. But make no mistake, Incon is dead. It was worth a shot. And that's the biggest thing to take home. Your death, guaranteed. But the chance of stealing gold fury, even if it's low, give it a shot. Because. Yeah. You know, what, what's an extra 200 gold on top of that 1,500? It was worth a try. Yeah, I mean, Props with Team income. Dignitas, I, I, and it's important to point this out, Kret, that the type of synergy that they had to immediately change their focus and synchronize crowd controls onto the enemy that's trying to steal the objective yeah. is not something that every team can do, especially a team that's working with newer players. As soon as Incon showed up, the silence went out, the banish went out after the silence. That's the type of stuff that you got to take the chance on because a lesser team would not have pulled that off, and Incon might have escaped with that. That said, oh, not taking some damage in the middle lane. Big damage from Agni. Finally has a little bit of that pen online with the ward shield, or the 
Wardstone? Wardstone. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Voidstone rank <laughs> 2 provides a penetration aura, which is a big buff to the item. Yes. Makes it very, very strong. It's going to help out Kiki a lot as he goes a little light on pen with his build going into the Breastplate of Bower. Speaking of Kiki, pushed off his tower. His tower dropped the in the middle lane. At best, finds big damage onto Nah, but he can't confirm the kill. Not using his ultimate to stay alive. Just one cooldown too short was best in that middle lane. Gnaw level 17, best two levels behind. Still yeah. almost secured the one-on-one -on -one kill. You know, that's uh, a testament to just how powerful best is. We saw in last game with the pentakill. Best has this best has this this tactic as we take a look at the left hand oh. lane. Let's hold that thought. Allied being aggressed on heavily by Zatman underneath the tower. Valkyrie's discretion should clean it up, and it does. One more shot for posterity, and that's gonna be the death and front. With the rest of the Tignatosh showing up, that'll be the tower cred, maybe even two. But two members are here for Snipe Gaming to defend this tier two tower. Right hand side, Gnaw is trying to defend a tower of his own. It is a tier two, he doesn't have his ultimate, but with use of beads, he's going to stay alive for now. Spirit Ball clears the wave. On the left hand side, it's a dive coming out. Best is going to get taken down. Incon ulting over the right. So this is a really good play. It gets him out to safety and applies more pressure to Nah. Ensures that it's going to be an inner tower trade. Last is Will back to make sure the Phoenix doesn't go down on his side. The only problem is Zapman on Freya. Freya's really bad at killing towers. It's yes. her biggest failing as a hunter because a lot of mages, like Kronos, for example, Auto attack mages get things that make them better at auto attacking. Freya's is ability damage, as opposed to some sort of modifier like we see with Kronos and Old Wa. Um, so Freya's ability damage doesn't affect the tower. You're just hitting like a mage that's not building straight magic power, and it's honestly a really big weakness of the character. So split push, not that great. When your team rotates over to help you, she does just fine. Shing taunted. Looks like Snipe Gaming decided against that taunt. I'm level 18. Yeah. I'm ready to fight. Shing takes barely any damage and puts some poke and immediately Snipe turns around. But extending your Freya point, Kret, you know, that's one of the holes that Freya Hunter really has. It's spectacular damage and really a, one of the better duelers uh, can really outduel most of the hunters. But you lose that guaranteed basic attack tower damage so that's essentially Laz's job this time around we see executioner um on him a titan's bane would really make me happy because his role is tower killer with uh, zapman on the on that freya so that's one of the holes that we're gonna see very little split push as you said and sieging will almost have to include Laz's. that said Laz's is on his farmathon he's got Another 1,300 gold to gain before he can come online with Chin Size. Now, here, here's the thing about the Chin's nerf. It increased the damage substantially, and hold that thought. <laughs> Zapman found himself in a tough spot in the jungle. He's going to do really good damage to Incon, and the engage from Dare to Care finds the Cataclysm onto three. Shockwave only onto Incon, but stunned out with a nice Spirit Ball from Na. Big pickup. That's... That's actually guaranteed Fire Giant. Here's the thing. There's only one Hog 3, and it's dead. You've got a circle of protection to defend on this objective, and we can caught out. Will be silenced out of his dash. Taken down. Big snipe from Kiki. Zap's going to be very low, and there's no real sustain, but I don't think it matters, as this Fire Giant's going to go down very quickly, and the circle of protection is going to make sure that Zapman doesn't even come close to dying here. It's, yep, there, there's his health back. Really good heal when you use it. Zapman also does have passive uh, life steal in that fray. 15% life steal is her yeah. passive. And, you know, he, he doesn't have any life steal built into the character, but baked in is that life steal. Two members underneath that tower right now. Kiki or not, and Allied being aggressed on. Four members in red jerseys. One of them's going to go down already, and the other defender falls to the wayside as Zapman picks up the double kill. Here comes the best. He's going to pick up nobody. Lazarus takes out Incon, and the best is being snipped out. Surrounded, Kret. It's just a matter of time, and Zapman is divine. That's kill number nine. Dignitas is looking really good right now. Sonic Boom coming through. Weaken. He went too far or he would have had lasses there. That's what it displays for you. Like, you Sonic Boom through, turn, made you look and run away. He wanted to see if he could get that kill. But it, it is going to be the game. Snipe has always been a team that knows when they're defeated. Or at least, uh... Sometimes they might overestimate their defeat. But they're definitely not afraid to use that F6 button. And get out of a game when they feel they can't win. 
21 to 4, Dignitas had a dominant showing. And, you know, you said it before, but just Kiki or, or Nah, right? Nah, I think, played incredible this game. So did Dare to Care. But this is really interesting because Nah played a very support mid laner. Very much so. Yes. And that was our. That was our point to look at going into this game. Understand your character and the character's role. Mages traditionally go into the middle lane because their rotations are impactful with large burst damage. But when you pick an Isis, you realize that you have Batman's tool belt. You have everything to do to help your team out. And his 2-0 and 10 assist slash line, as well as building Divine Ruin in a build, just shows his commitment to his role on the team. And those ultimates and the rest of his kit really did well. I'm excited for the future because this... The, I, Isis play is essentially how you can gauge how selfless an individual is. And I yeah. saw next to no ego in Nas Isis play. And the future looks bright. I'm really excited to see what Dignitas is going to do in the upcoming Smite Pro League. And also the continuation of our tournament. They'll be moving on to the finals to face off against the winner of Cognitive Gaming versus Fat Chunks Assemble. Stay tuned, guys, and we'll be back with your finals matchup.